All right, I have Marielle with me today talking about a case that she recently had in acute care with a referral for endo. Um, and take it away. I'll let you explain the case. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Marielle. Um, I had this case in acute care yesterday, like Dr. Ad said. This patient came in for a referral for a root canal on number 19, and we were given a bite wing and a PA from this referring doctor. Um, do I change? Um, patient was in pain, and that was the reason they got into acute care, right? Yes. She had pain in the lower left. She said it was a radiating pain that felt like it throbbed every once in a while, and it radiated down her mandible on the left side, she described it as. Um, so by b looking at these x-rays, it they were okay. The angulation, there's a cone cut. Um, you can kind of tell that the occlusal of 19 was pretty worn down. Looks like there was a filling all across the occlusal that may have been broken. Um, and then some potential occlusal wear from um, the maxillary premolar that we see there. Um, but other than that, these x-rays don't really tell us too much. It's potential that 19 is necrotic from looking at these x-rays, but no, other than no that, big lesions. Exactly. No big lesions. No, not too much of super high concern from these x-rays. And looking here, looks like she's seen a dentist plenty of times mm -hmm. and you've got two restorations on 20. You've got a very worn, so it's at least a few years old, hopefully on 19. And it looks like four different restorations on 18 and then a little patch up on 15. So she's definitely been in a dental chair a fair amount of times. Um, what else did you see in there when you just first looked in the mouth? Oh yeah, first looking in the mouth, it definitely looked like, okay, I see why the doctor referred this. 19's filling all across the occlusal was just fractured out. Um, so looking at it clinically, it seemed like the answer was pretty clear that 19 would be the culprit tooth of all the pain that she's been having. Um, and I really didn't suspect anything else other than 19, just initially looking in her mouth. So realistic looking at a referral for 19, 19 has a problem, sure. But what did me and Dr. Radnicki make you do? <laughs> we, we tested all three, 19, 18, 19, 20, and test results were, they changed the story for us a little bit. Okay. So 19 yes. didn't feel cold had a normal-ish EPT, but didn't really hurt, is that yes, right? Yes, every test that I did on her didn't make her jump at all. Um, and so I was really wondering if this was the tooth that was causing all this pain, because every single test I did did not have an adverse reaction at all. So this was the first kind of big question mark I had over my head when doing these. Okay, so then you moved on to your other teeth in the quadrant. Yes. 18, on the other hand, had a very different story. Looking at it in her mouth, I didn't see anything clinically wrong with it. All the restorations, for the most part, were pretty intact. But then all of the testings I did, these tests made her jump in her seat and almost uh, replicated the symptoms that she came in for. Especially when I tapped with the back of my mirror, she jumped very hard in her seat. The biting test made her jump very hard. Um, the cold test, she reacted not as adversely as the biting and the palpation, but it was definitely more of a reaction than when I cold tested 19. Um, and was very delayed, correct? Yes, very delayed. So questionable, of, did she really feel cold mm -hmm. or did she kind of think she felt cold and she had a little bit of pressure from the cotton pellet pushing on the right. tooth, which percussion and biting hurt on this tooth, uh, it, questionable there. Very much. But when you, we're doing your exam and you're testing on 18. Um, what did she say when you asked about her reaction to percussion biting? Um, she said... Basically that that replicated what she'd been feeling. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it wasn't just an incidental finding that when you did something to 18, there was a problem, but it wasn't the thing right. that she was here for. It, it was the thing she was here for. Yes, it was the thing. That is true. So what did we do then? So we actually took some new x-rays. We took a bite wing and a PA. Um, on the, who is it? On the bite wing here, you know, everything seems pretty on, on brand with what we saw on the initial referral x-rays. But then looking at the PA, we saw a pretty big radiolucency on the mesial of 18, which 
we suspected, hmm, maybe that could be a contributing reason why she came in today. Sure. And so because of that, we decided to look in the mouth again and kind of examine that tooth a little bit more. And this wasn't something that you could really see decay in the mouth. Yes. Um, so it was yes. kind of under that amalgam, hard to say exactly yes. what's going on there, but it's something we saw on the x-ray and looked a little closer at 18. Exactly. So what did we get then? It, far as getting a little bit more information. So when we decided to look at 18 a little bit more, we decided to use a transilluminator to kind of see if we can see under that amalgam a little bit and get a little more information. Um, and when doing that, we did find some very critical information about this case. Um, with using the transilluminator, we saw there was a really big crack along the distal lingual cusp of this tooth. Um, that could be a very big possibility as to why she was experiencing the pain that she was having and why she came in today. And getting a little more light in there, you could see that that distal pit had some amalgam that had fractured out with some recurrent decay under it. Um, can't see as well, but you've got an amalgam here butted up against a class five, what looks like glass ionomer. Um, and then there was some sort of glass ionomer patch on the lingual and the large amalgam through there. This tooth is been assaulted by a dental drill several times. <laughs> so what did we talk about with the patient then? So after that, we kind of talked about different treatment options for the patient. Um, one of those treatment options included potentially removing the amalgam, kind of looking inside of the, of the tooth and maybe doing endo, build up in a crown. But with that, the prognosis of the tooth is still very questionable. Um, depending on how far down the fracture goes, we don't know if we can necessarily restore the tooth and save it to be 100% as it was before. Um, or the other option was to also extract the tooth and to do nothing with the tooth. And with the questionable, questionable prognosis of doing endo, buildup and crown, she wasn't very comfortable with the idea of it not being 100% guaranteed that the pain will go away after we do all that treatment. Yeah, it would she, take a long time. She was kind of scared of the idea that the crack might not be a fixable crack. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, if I remember right, we discussed with her a little bit of we can see where there's some crack, but maybe there's crack underneath the amalgam, likely goes towards the pulp or actually into the pulp. Exactly. Um, once it's into the pulp, that's a good reason that the pulp is inflamed or actually necrosed or partially necrotic. Um, but if it's in the pulp chamber, in the floor of the chamber, probably not a fixable thing. So kind of a, we could do a diagnostic crack removal and see where it goes, exactly. but she wasn't too good with that risk. Yes, yes. So she ultimately decided to extract number 18. And then later down the line, you know, restore the missing spots with with fix or implants or whatnot. So we chatted with her about, you know, if we we're looking for predictability, let's get a crown on 19, maybe reevaluate, see if 19 is truly necrotic. If you remember, 19 had a normal-ish EPT. Um, whether it felt cold or not doesn't automatically mean it's necrotic. Um, we put it down as necrotic on our pulp test form, but they're not an absolute there. Um, maybe something we reevaluate with a comprehensive exam. but. 19 a little bit more predictable and definitely replacing 14 going to be a little more predictable than um, working with 18. Exactly. So we took out the tooth. Obviously, you guys can see the, the photo of the tooth <laughs> not in the mouth anymore. Um, easier to show transillumination there. Um, you know, extent of the crack. You know, you're getting down into root structure. This doesn't show it as well, but you can kind of see the crack goes down to about here. Probably a good idea that this tooth was extracted. Not mm -hmm. likely going to be a good long-term prognosis and probably going to find that it's non-restorable if we opened it up and saw where that crack went. You know, if it goes down into the distal canal at all, definitely not a, not a fixable thing. So we took out the tooth. Um, tell me about the, we'll call it after the tooth was taken out. Yeah, after the tooth was taken out, she just was very, very thankful. She actually said that she wanted to continue coming to Creighton Dental instead of going back to her primary dentist. Um, she was just very impressed with the thoroughness of how we tested everything. A lot of the things that we did, she said she hadn't seen her previous dentist do in the office when, she, when they initially referred for number 19. 
Um, and so, yeah, she is coming in for a comprehensive in a couple of weeks to become a patient of record here. And she was, she was in, she had a much bigger smile than she had when she came in. That's for sure. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> could, you could see the difference in her from, you know, when she had not had an extraction to when she had just had a tooth extracted from her mouth, she was much happier. That was, that was an interesting <laughs> dynamic. Um, Talk to me a little bit about how you navigated the idea that this was a referral from a private practice that was specifically for 19 um, and making sure that you know we did a thorough exam, mm -hmm. figured out what was going on and it, the information conflicted. Yeah, um, so definitely nothing wrong that the referring dentist did whatsoever. It could have been a mistake that you know, the receptionist or the front the front desk lady who sent out the referral maybe put number 19 instead of number 18 on the referral form. And so there's there's some things that um, could could have caused the referral to be quote unquote wrong. But what the previous dentist had done, nothing about it was was poorly done um he and, may and have yeah we we have no idea what exactly happened. we don't so know what happened so not making not making assumptions not making guesses as to what happened but telling the patient hey this is what we're seeing today exactly. um, and this is why we're recommending this backing it up with data from our our very thorough exam exactly exactly cool yeah. um any other learning points that you felt like you had in this this uh interaction with the patient? Um, just kind of trust the process of testing. Um, don't necessarily, um, don't only test one tooth, test all the adjacent teeth around it because the pain that they come in for could very much be coming from a tooth that's near the tooth that was referred over for, um, but the story could be completely different once you start testing everything. Um, so and could have been uh, both teeth. It could have been, Very exactly. Well been I busy. actually told her at the end, she asked me specifically about, oh, well, 19 still need a root canal. And I told her, oh, yeah, you know, we actually don't know. I'd have to, you know, look at it again. Once you come back, we'll take a look at 19 because it could be contributing to some of that pain. But based but on it wasn't what we today. saw. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, trust the process. Trust the process, <laughs> yes. The, the, the process works. The thoroughness yes. works. Exactly. Um, it's hard to miss things when you're more thorough than necessary. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you.